Hey, first of all, thank you so much for coming and sharing your film with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. So just to begin, uh, for Eric, uh, what uh, began this project for you? What initiated uh, the idea for making a film? I was approached by uh, Yutaka Tashibana, Japanese producer, and he wanted us to make a co-pro between Singapore and Japan because Singapore and Japan did sign this uh, friendship treaty and a couple of years back it was the 50th anniversary. Um, we tried to make it on time for that, but uh, somehow the script took forever to put together. So we missed it, but we still finished off the film. Yeah. Well, it was worth it. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, for Takumi-san, uh, what drew you to the character of Masato in, in the film? Uh, or did something else bring you to the, to the project? I think uh, Masato is myself. And because uh, this shooting is, uh, I went to first time in Singapore, and I, I met uh, Alex's staff and cast. They were so kind, and uh, we were uh, uh, we uh, worked together, and day by day, we looks like a little true family, like a weird uh, Masato. <laughs> the key to family, <laughs> clearly. And uh, Eric, uh, as I understand it, this is your third film in which noodles play a uh, central role? Yeah, after uh, uh, very uh, beauty, so I'm on this uh, phase of, of, yeah, actually my first film uh, it was called Nipok Man, and um, Nipok is, is like a Futuchini noodle, a flat noodle um, that, that I, I love to eat, you know, back then, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on this, uh, food phase now. Mm. <laughs> Good. And uh, for, for both of you, how is uh, ramen te, the combination between bakute and ramen? <laughs> I'm curious. I didn't eat. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, didn't. Yeah. But it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> And it looks so beautiful on screen. I, 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 we can almost hear the stomach scrumbling uh, from the audience. <laughs> There's ramen outside. Uh, I, and I'm wondering if, uh, if both of you uh, cook and your, your uh, yeah. relationship to food outside the film that maybe yeah, because when we got to know each other, you know, through Skype in Japan, Singapore, um, we were talking about food. And at the time, he was trying to create his own uh, ramen stock meat with prawns. So this is a restaurant that I did a restaurant and I did a restaurant that I did a restaurant that I did a restaurant and 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 I did a restaurant So my parents actually own a restaurant, so cooking has always been around me and has been in my everyday. Um, so this time I was playing the role of a ramen shop owner, which was the first time for me. Um, so in order to prepare, I tried to make different types of soup. Um, and because of that, there's a lot of smells going on in my room, so I think our neighbors were quite um, annoyed by that. <laughs> Now, uh, this, this film is uh, filled with so many stars from across Asia, Japan, and Singapore. Of course, Takumi Saito, and uh, the pop star Seiko Matsuda, comedian uh, Mark Lee, and actress Janet Ah. Um, but one of the characters I'm most fascinated with is Bridget Chu, who plays the grandmother. Uh, I was wondering how you came upon uh, her uh, for this role, as well as how uh, the directing and acting process was collaborating. Yeah, actually, things with um, I'm in Singapore. It's, it's a small population. There are not many old actors. So <clears throat> I normally watch a lot of um, short films, student films, and I saw Beatrice in, in one of the 
the shorts and I, I really liked the performance so I met her and um, when I was talking to her about the, um, the treatment the premise she knew exactly what the character was so you know when, when you have an actor that feels the character it makes my life a lot easier so yeah we, we pulled her in you know she was very good those were some of the most uh, touching uh, scenes uh, in the film. And, and she had a crush on Takumi. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> she kept on trying to hold his hands when he was there. <laughs> no, there's a lot of tension, yeah. <laughs> How, how was the uh, kind of, uh, collaboration process, especially in those scenes? There's so much uh, packed into the, the dialogue. cooking together and I felt like a lot of the communication was done not necessarily by words but things that you can't see but can be felt. Um, this is something that I remember very well um, and then of course we also ate together um, and in those moments I really felt that the things that I couldn't see that I couldn't express in words just was coming out of me um, and just working to, with her was a really wonderful experience. I, I find her to be a very wonderful actress. that we can communicate with. I think because of that, we were able to get closer to each other and we opened our hearts to each other. Um, and in those moments, I really learned a lesson that um, words do not have to be there in order to connect at a deeper level. Um, and that was something that I learned very much through this experience. Mm. Before uh, opening up to the audience, I just want to ask one more question uh, for both of you. Uh, you spend so much time getting close to these characters uh, uh, that by the end we have this kind of enigmatic ending where uh, Seiko Matsuda's character comes to the uh, ramen shop uh, and meets uh, Takumi-san's character. I'm wondering, both of you, where do you imagine these characters going uh, beyond the film? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'd like them to be together. <laughs> Up to you. Uh, running a ramen shop together. Why not? <laughs> Good happy ending. Uh, all right, so uh, we have two microphones on either side of the auditorium. So if you do have a question, uh, please raise your hand high so we can see you in the low lights. We have a hand over here. Hi, I have a question for Takumi-san. I'm curious what your favorite dish was in Singapore, of all the uh, foods that you ate. I have a lot of. Um, so especially I like uh, chicken soup uh, for make him. <laughs> uh, my shooting last day, uh, he's so busy all day, but he make the soup, chicken soup. Um, I'm so emotional, so crying, yeah, so tasty. Yeah. So we, we communicate uh, each other to food like uh, this film. Yeah. 
some special thank you. Were you actually preparing any of the food in the film? Or were they stunt double fingers? <laughs> there was no budget. So we actually did the cooking that you see. Um, we, of course, there were professional cooks there on site, uh, but what you do see is something that we all did together. More questions here in the fourth row? Hi, first of all, welcome to New York City. Um, my name is Claire Zhang. I'm a journalist for uh, Kawaii Kakoi Skoi. Uh, I have a question for the director. Um, so at the very beginning of the film, it seems to be there are a lot of um, movie, uh, 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 food scenes. And then it kind of sort of uh, transmitted to this family conflict. And then it turns back to a lot of food. So I just want to know what exactly do you want to tell? What kind of story do you want? Is, is it really more about the food or is it more about the, conf the conflict? among the family members. You know, it's all about <clears throat> coming together, you know, whether it be Christmas, Chinese New Year, or Thanksgiving. And somehow, I mean, you know, it's, it's food that I feel can heal. So, in essence, right, I mean, as we were working on the script for quite a few years, um, we decided to do something very, very simple and to the heart. And essentially, I mean, for me, the most important scene was with grandma and grandson, you know, um, that you can forgive. And, you know, I mean, life is short, and you want to make something positive. Yeah. Thanks. More questions? We have another one over here. I think the thing I enjoyed the most about the film was that you were showing, not telling. There was so much that we learned about the characters and their histories that was through images and not sort of weepy dialogue over the top, you know, voiceover kind of narration. Um, but you had some of that. So where did you draw the line between sort of showing and telling? Well, you know, I, I felt the um, diary entries was very important, the mother's thoughts. and. Um, we actually have recorded a lot more, so actually at editing stage, you know, we were still able to sort of um, change it a bit. But my experience with, with this particular film is that I'm, I don't speak a single word of Japanese, though, though I can order certain dishes. <laughs> <clears throat> it, it was written in English, the script, then it was translated into Japanese, and as we all know, I mean, it will be lost in translation. So what was very, very important was that my main Japanese actors, I mean, they, they can all speak English. So it was easier as long as they could understand those characters that were, you know, important to me and <clears throat> that they actually workshop the dialogue to be essentially the, the characters that they were playing. So a lot of times, um, with Takumi especially, he's very intuitive. And he's also a director, and I saw his first feature, which is excellent. Come to see it tomorrow, but I think it's sold out. <coughs> Thank you. Um, he, he's wonderful, and he knew the Masato character to a T. And um, I mean, half the time I'm going to watching them do the... I mean, we, we essentially shot the film. At most, there may be three takes. Essentially, just one, two takes. So what you're watching here, essentially, is just that first performance every time. And um, it made my life a lot easier, you know? And, and actually, I'm just watching them, but I'm thinking, are they saying in Japanese, the director's totally lousy? <laughs> you don't know what we're saying and what we're doing, but anyways, they fell for the characters, and that's the most important thing. So in, in a way, I, I feel really, really blessed with this film, and um, it's, for me, um, the, the film I love the most, and it's not just because it's my most recent film, but when we went to Japan and working with the Japanese crew and when we went back to Singapore to, to finish off the film, a lot of the Japanese team on their own came to Singapore. Not that they needed to come, 
but they were there to follow through with the film, and I was deeply touched. And in a lot of ways, I feel that we've created family with you know the Japanese team that we worked with, and especially now we're buddies, you know, from Skype Skype partners. And uh, he was in Singapore recently about uh, a month ago, and I've run to my favorite wonton mee, you know, and it's a it's a delicious noodle dish with a lot of spices, really hot. He ate up all the gravy, all the chili. And he told me it was the best meal he had this time around. Yeah. So he doesn't like my chicken soup anymore. <laughs> Do we have any more uh, questions for either uh, Takumi-san or Eric? Looks like we have two right here, if we could do them one by one. Uh, we, we saw a lot of dishes both in Singapore uh, in Japan, is there something specifically about noodles that made it a good focal point for the film? Well, you know, when we decided to do a food film, and I love Japanese food and love, uh, you know, my, my Singaporean hawker food, we wanted street food really to, to be, you know, the, 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 the main core of it, and, and ramen essentially is a street food. This is, it's like cheap noodles um, and you know we, we have this idea of mixing the noodles with a Singaporean dish called bakute which is the pork rib tea and I would never have made this film if I tried it and it didn't taste good so I, I have this friend you know who owns um, this special workshop where they, they make noodles um, for the Japanese restaurants and he did different intensities of the bakute stock, right? And we tried it one afternoon and it was really good, right? But not with the thick ramen noodles, but the, the sort of thin, thinner one. And we thought, okay, I mean, it tastes so good. And now in Singapore, there are a few outlets actually making ramen tea, right? <laughs> Right, I've heard that that's caught on as a kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fad. Uh, we had another question here. This question is for Takumi-san. Um, <clears throat> what was it like filming in Singapore? So this is Singapore. Singapore. Singaporean film history is still quite young, um, but to be able to work with Eric, I, I really felt that he has been really leading um, in that field. And I felt that because the young staff that was on set all had their own individual identity, individual ideas, and I could tell that they were really pouring their energy to make the films better, but also speaking out about what, how best to make the movie better. Um, another thing I felt that was different from Japan is that the unions um, there are very strong, and so it was 10-hour work days, which um, in Japan, sometimes it can go, um, film sets can go on till 5 a.m. Um, 
and that never happened. And I thought it was wonderful that we worked for 10 hours, and then I had time to actually think and input. Um, and I felt that was a very healthy way of working. Um, and from now on, I do want to continue working um, on, in films in Singapore as well. So lots of food and 10 hour work days. Yep. Those are the keys. <laughs> are there any more uh, maybe lessons since uh, you're now so active in directing in addition to acting uh, that you've exchanged with uh, your experience with Eric? So this is the あの、アジアだったり、え、ヨーロッパ、世界中の、そうですね。だから今のシンガポールってのはとっても50万人、え、クロアチアと同じぐらいですね。神奈川県と同じぐらいです。あの、本当に小さくエネルギーの、え、に満ちた、え、素晴らしい国に、素晴らしいタイミングで、え、一緒にコクリエーションできて幸せで
僕も彼もテストをしないんですねでやっぱテストを重ねるとあの演じる側も、えー、全てのセクションが、えー、本当に何て言うんですかねこう、うん、作為を、えー、持ってしまう余計にということは自分が役者としても、えー、何度も体験してきたことなのでその最初の本当に、えー、1回目に生まれる、うん、空気っていうのは本当にこうリアルなものになるっていうそれがまた映画に出すことっていうのを、えー、僕も彼も多分大事にしてるポイントが一緒だなっていう。あの共通意識はその時に理解したんですけどあの演じる上でその監督の目線とかっていうのは全くなく本当にただいつカメラが回ってもこのマサトというキャラクターにでいるというか、まあ、ほぼ僕自身なんですけどだからほぼ何て言うんだろうむしろ逆にその一人の人間としてそこに生活させて。くれる環境を彼が作ってくれたという、本当に恵まれた環境でしたね。Uh, so no, actually, I didn't have any issues with having sort of the director side of me take over my acting side.、Um, when I first met Eric,、um, it, my film actually was at the Shanghai Film Festival and was getting praised there,、um, and I, I was congratulated by Eric.、Um, and he asked me, how many days did you take to shoot that film? And I said, one week. And then he said, I like you. <laughs> Um, and I think the, the, the story here is not that it was because shooting faster is better, but rather that we both really understood in each other that,、um, that neither of us did too many rehearsals.、Um, because when you do, oftentimes you start to overthink the creative process.、Um, and as an actor, I often did experience this when things were over rehearsed.、Um, I really take.、Um, I find importance in first time actions and also reactions that happen、uh, and, and the power and what that can do for the work itself. And I felt that we both cherish these moments.、Um, and so my director's side actually didn't take over throughout the process.、Uh, but what I did try to do is that I can be Masato at any given time. And actually, Masato is quite like me anyway.、Um, so it was easy in a lot of senses. But as a person,、um, I was able to really gather、um, and become Masato at any point. But、um, what also helped is that Eric managed to create an environment that allowed me to do that, and that、um, was very pleasing to work with. Great.、Uh, so we should have a final question, and I see one up <laughs> towards the back. Hi, thank you very much.、Um, so my question is.、Um, I really liked in, in your movie, I thought you struck a very nice balance between dealing with this very complicated, deep、uh, subject of history、um, and this kind of international history.、Um, but then the movie actually felt very simple and approachable and real and, and personal.、Uh, it's just this family's drama and, and you know, dealing with it.、Um, so I want to ask you, what are the challenges working with, with historical topics and this kind of Uh, a theme that already has people with a lot of opinions and feelings about it. <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, in Singapore, with、uh, some of the, the older、uh, citizens, there, there is still some animosity, and, 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 and it's true because, like,、uh, when they recently、uh, had this war museum, which.、Um, Was open last year,、um, there was a public outcry. But、um, <clears throat> with the film, I mean, essentially, you know, it's, it's a family story, and we didn't want to get too deep into the details. And、um, in, in that sense,、um, a lot of it really is through food. And you can read it however you want to read it. And I think、um, for me, the film also is、um, about memories. And、um, when we released the, the, or had the premiere in the Berlin Film Festival earlier this year, for the first time in my life, I was being interviewed by certain journalists. And、um, 
they started to cry while talking to me, but they were going on about their grandma's pudding or their mother's whatever, you know, and that it was time to reconnect. So that is all the film really wants to say that, um, you know, we, we have to forgive and, and it's about love and mercy more than anything else. Thank you. That's a good note to end on.